Hello, my name is Blue Orange 22 and this video is going to be a part two continuation of my last night's video where I say that most people are men's rights activists. And the crux of that video was that I believe most people would agree with the things that MRAs believe if we actually explained what those issues are and what those beliefs are. And the reason why people are so against the men's rights movement and the reason why the men's rights movement has such a negative reputation is because people have misconceptions about what MRAs actually believe. So in this video, I'm going to be giving you a very brief overview of MRAs and the men's rights movement and some of the issues that we talk about and some of the issues that we believe. By no means is this a fully comprehensive video covering the men's rights movement and everything we believe, because if I did, it would be over an hour long. Now, I would recommend Cassie J's The Red Pill documentary. No, it's not the same as the Red Pill movement as a very good introduction to the men's rights movement. But aside a few people asking me to make a video explaining the men's rights movement beliefs, and so here we go. The men's rights movement, first of all, is not a white man's movement. And it's not a misogynistic movement. We believe in equality for all. And there are MRAs of all genders, of all races, of all nationalities, all over the world. But what are we actually talking about when we say men's rights and men's issues? What sort of things are we talking about? Well, there's areas in the world where men are discriminated against under law. In some countries, there's male-only conscription where all male citizens are forced to join the army against their will or risk going to prison. And in countries like Switzerland, if you're not able to do your national service as a man, you have to pay a higher tax rate until the age of 30. In some countries, the state pension age, which is the state which is the age you can retire and collect your pension, is actually higher for men than for women. So for example, a man can retire at 65 and a woman can retire at 60. So a man doesn't get to have as much time in retirement, especially when you consider that men die younger. Circumcision is another major men's rights issue, and this is an issue that a lot of people, especially Americans, don't quite understand why is circumcision such a big deal. Well, the reality is circumcision actually does do a lot more damage than people think. And you might read studies that say circumcision is harmless, but this just isn't true. And when you study the anatomy of the foreskin and you look at the nerve endings that are being cut off, there is a lot of damage. MRAs talk about the education gap, where boys are behind in school. And there are studies that show that boys get lower grades for the same work. Boys are less likely to graduate high school, less likely to go to college, and there are less scholarships available for men. Men are more likely to be homeless and living on the streets, which is kind of odd when you think about the fact that men are supposed to be the economically privileged gender. If men were the economically privileged gender, why are they more likely to be homeless on the streets? Men are more likely to be unemployed. If you look at the United States and the United Kingdom and Canada or Sweden, and you look at the last 40 years, you see that for the most part, most of the time in any given year, men are more likely to be more unemployed than women. And despite this, some of these countries actually have laws that disfavor men when it comes to employment and when it comes to hiring. Men die younger, but there's less research for men's health on a per death capita, which means for every woman that dies, more money gets spent on research than when a man dies. And there's often less low income healthcare programs available for men. When you look at the entire picture of men and boys and women and girls, the statistics just don't line up for men being privileged. And the issues that men and men's rights activists talk about are really just side of kind of basic necessities, education, healthcare, employment. And there's a misconception that MRAs are misogynistic and we want to take away women's rights and we just want to maintain our, pace of, our place of privilege. And this really just isn't true. And when you really follow MRAs and what we say and what we believe, we really do just want basic equality. 
Now, this is obviously just a very brief introduction into what uh, the men's rights movement believes, but I hope you can get one thing from this video, and that's MRAs are not trying to take away women's rights, and we don't advocate for male supremacy. We just look at areas where men and boys face legal and social disparities, and we want to address them. So you can go to my channel, actually, and go to the search feature and look up pretty much any one of these issues. Homelessness, healthcare, unemployment, education. And I've done videos on just about everything that you could think of when it comes to men's rights issues. And I've always put sources and links and direct quotes to support the videos that I make. One of the things that feminists and MRAs often argue over is does feminism or MRAs better address men's issues? And to that response, I say, any movement that is centered around women's issues is never really going to be enough to solve men's issues. And a common misconception is that MRAs are against the idea of feminism. It's not the idea of feminism that we're against. What we are against are the feminists who constantly attack and criticize MRAs just for existing, and feminist organizations who lobby for laws that discriminate against men, or protest against efforts to pass laws to bring equality for men. So when you look at the men's rights movement 